that takes us to the the Forbidden Door Casino Gauntlet. And listen, I know some people are kind of tired of AEW's variations of of the Battle Royal, but I thought this, this is a was, winner. Okay, the, I thought this match was winning. a ton of fun, and this was one of the most stacked matches of its type when it comes to just sheer talent that they had this was insane what they had of these nine people that just came time after time with the mysteries so it's first pinfall or submission ends it so we start off with jay white and pack so in theory one of these guys could win it before anyone else enters which would have been <laughs> the best ending to this match it ends at in two some minutes. point they're gonna have to book one of those finishes where oh, like, that would be so lame you're promising 21 way. people and then it ends like within the first i don't I don't think so. Oh, it has to be the right context. Yes. Was like that the number they did? They give a number of how many? Yeah. They did 21. say twenty-one. Okay. They said so, it last time too. Okay, so there were eleven people that were just st standing there in their gear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mystico is out third. He got a pretty good reaction here. Um, this was a good place to bring him back. He had not been on AEW programming since March, and, and uh, LA what, uh, gave him a great reaction. Yeah. yeah. Jay tries to undo his mask and then uh, Pac launches Jay White so fast into the corner. Fourth is Will Ospreay, who gets the biggest reaction of the night. This place mm -hmm. exploded for Will Ospreay. And he comes out and you've got the history with Jay White. You've got the history with Pac. And then Mystico does La Mystica onto Ospreay. And the way these two are getting into it after the match, too, and exchanging words, I have a pretty good sense that they're going to do a match on television at some point in these coming weeks. That would be amazing. Yeah, honestly, like last time it was Will Ospreay that I think was obviously like the big difference maker for that casino gauntlet. And I think the key to that one's success because it became a match where it was suddenly Will Ospreay facing these, it, having these interactions with people you've never seen him have interactions with. Some of them you have, but like even those were kind of cool, like a Jay White. And this match was very much the same. This was a point where Will Ospreay was in the ring and you're realizing, oh yeah, uh, Jay White is here. Oh yeah, Will Osprey and Pat can have an interaction. Then you remember Mystico is in the ring with Osprey at the same time, and those two can have an interaction. Like this, this is why I think this match has worked both times. It's because you're getting these dream pairings, you know, in in very short, short succession. Fifth was Shota Umino who comes out and he breaks up La Mystica and has this amazing sequence with Osprey, another one who's had um, history with Osprey, and hits this tornado DDT. Sixth is Claudio Castagnoli, who was another like this guy might have been the MVP of the match because mm -hmm. this dude is like this incredible base for all these these lucha guys for uh leo rush would come out seventh as a big surprise and just watching those two together oh was amazing first of all like i think just the fact that leo rush is back at AEW, even in, in, just in a match like this that's a headline grabbing you know news event right like that's real forbidden door stuff for me you know with the with the way he um exited way back or like who knows kind of what happened with with the whole like big swole thing but like he didn't have a long stay in AEW. And are, he's are, back are you in saying AEW? that not only does Roosh have to face MJF, but he's now not even the number one <laughs> Roosh in the company? Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Um, yeah, so like Leo Rush coming in, like let's just remember, like we're seeing Mystico in here. We're seeing Shota Umino here. Leo Rush is in this. Like these are big surprises. Uh, of these nine, you can make any combination of these nine in matches mm -hmm. and they'd be terrific TV matches, if not higher. We we also have to mention the picture in picture spot with Claudio Castagnoli. Yeah, where he I was going to get to this. He did big swings on everybody. Jay White is in. He does ten swings on him. Mystico is in. He does ten swings on him. Osprey is in. He does ten swings. And at this point, he's like huffing and puffing. He's tired. Then Shota Umino comes in. He does ten. Pack comes in. He who he catches in midair. And Pack isn't just like he Pack is squirming in the middle of this big swing. So Claudio has to like basically like wrestle. A he's tornado. holding him up almost like it was like a like like a Boston Crab setup. The way oh he was God. going around like uh, like Pack was like uh, like completely upside down taking this giant swing and he's moving around so like claudio still swings him 10 times so we're talking one two three four five, like 50 swings on five different people in the body of this picture in picture break it was like one of the best oh by the end of it he teases uh, uh doing it to bryce of course because he's dizzy which was yeah and, and if amazing. you were only watching the picture in picture the audience was going to go nuts if he had done it to Bryce. To the point, I thought he was just going to call an audible and do it because the place oh, would have exploded have. if he did it on Bryce. But that was, it, it was a great sequence. He had a but great excuse because he was dizzy. And I don't think you could just, can you disqualify somebody for doing a big swing to him? 
Come on, it's not exactly that offensive of a maneuver. You're it's, just kind of like it's playoff around. season, playoff rules. Yeah, yeah, it was like the best picture in picture spot ever. So Leo Rush, as we mentioned, was seventh. He was awesome in this match. I would love mm-hmm. to watch him and Claudio just so get like great. seven minutes. Um, Orange Cassidy comes out eighth, and he comes out to the Pixies as well. So he came out to both his themes on this show. Oh, he was wearing the black shirt, if you notice. So we now have the uh, the split personality of Orange Cassidy. I guess this is his version of like the uh, the Great Buddha. This is this is his demon. <laughs> That's black it, yeah. shirt, Orange Cassidy. <laughs> demon, Orange Cassidy. Okay. Yeah, he's all bandaged up from the attack earlier. And Osprey <laughs> sizes him up for the hidden blade, stops, and then White intervenes with a sleeper suplex to Osprey and a urinagi onto Orange Cassidy. Ninth is Hechicero, who has not been on AEW since February. And hits a springboard Rana, or is hit with a springboard Rana by Mystico, and this unbelievable tilt a whirl into a head scissors on Claudio, followed by a springboard Rana to the floor onto Claudio. Again, Claudio was probably the MVP of the match overall. Like he worked with everyone, and you just wanted to watch like different matches of Claudio involved with all these guys of all different like sizes and shapes. Robinson, then uh, Juice Robinson, knocks Pac off the turnbuckle, just like he did on Sunday, but now it's legal. White hits a sleeper suplex to Cassidy. Osprey's in with the hidden blade. Stormbreaker gets countered into a Rana by Cassidy for a near fall. And then Osprey connects with the Oscutter, cutter, pinning Orange Cassidy. And Will Osprey wins the gauntlet and will challenge Swerve Strickland, who comes down for a stare down as they go off the air. Probably not the match you were expecting this early mm-hmm. at Forbidden Door, but you have now made this gauntlet Will Osprey's match. And yeah. this all of a sudden is a really big match for Forbidden Door. Huge. Yeah. I mean, so first of all, let's just talk about the gauntlet. I mean, I thought this was awesome. One- the first one was was great. Um, I, I I I heard a lot of criticisms about maybe the rule set being confusing. I think that's just to be expected whenever you're introducing something new. I'm sure the first Royal Rumble was very confusing to some people as well. Um, but the original this- Rumbles were like they, they they bombed. Like when they tried them out on house shows, like Vince hated the idea of the Rumble. It, it was yeah. only when they needed to come up with an idea for USA that they revisited it, and yeah, it did not mm-hmm. get over at first and did not draw. But clearly they were happy enough with the reception that they got for the first time to do it again, to put it in a pretty high f- profile spot, you know, in the lead up to a forbidden door. And they did it even better this time around. Again, so much of the key is the surprises. And I think the level of talent and AEW has no shortage of that. Like this was a great glimpse into not just ob- obviously the AEW roster, but the connections that this this uh, and the access this this promotion has to people coming in from various promotions. Forbidden Door is like the perfect time to do something like this. And I, I hope this becomes an annual tradition to find your next challenge. Wait, they did one in Door. April. They might be a monthly tradition. You're right at this point. Yeah. But this was this was a lot of fun, you know, better than last time. And uh, everybody felt like, you know, everybody was a major player in this one. You know, I, I hope to see a lot of them uh, involved at the pay-per-view. Um, and yeah, Osprey versus Swerve is a match that I think um, we're all probably pretty surprised by. I mean, some people were expecting this to be a Wembley match. I mean, I expected Osprey, given um, the fact that he has the international championship, to not be anywhere near the world title uh, scene. But clearly they might have bigger plans for both of them maybe um in in pay-per-views ahead and um yeah this was a bit surprising what do you think john well first of all just my thought on on the gauntlet like i love the match um as i mentioned before like there is the the fact that when aw does these types of matches you do focus on like where are all of your biggest stars i do give some leeway on this one because when you think about it like number one um you know, you, MJF, MJF could have been 21. A, a, MJF to me was was like a glaring one, like just from a storyline perspective, why he would not be in this match. Samoa Joe was another one. Like those are the big ones. But you you have the guys that are selling the loss from Anarchy in the arena. And that does give an out for like a, primarily a Danielson or, or a Darby. Um, you, you can argue that John Moxley already has his scheduled title defenses coming up. He is going to be defending his title probably at Forbidden Door, but it it is still a consistent thing that you know you have all these main event stars, and you know you watch a match like this, you, you want to see all those big stars. But there's a ton of injuries in AEW too. I didn't think this one was as glaring of, as some of the other ones where they do these tournaments and all your big guys are on TV, but none of them are involved in the the big tournament. Maybe it's a random draw, you know, like they, 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 they might pick names out of a hat and, you know, they fill up the 21 and not everybody gets called. And they picked it. They're like, Roosh. They're like, 
read the other half. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was happy to see that, uh, to, to see Leo Rush uh, back, back here. But I, I thought the match was great. To be quite honest, I, I wish they dedicated more of the show to it. I think you could have you could have gone a bit deeper into this because mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed this match a lot. And they had to wrap things up. Uh, Rampage on Friday is going to be at... S- First of all, we should talk about Swerve versus uh, Osprey. I mean, this this at yeah. this point guarantees that Swerve will probably be in the main event after Bindor. This is a headlining match if there ever is one for a, a pay-per-view like that. Um, so I'm happy to see that for Swerve. Um, this is a high-profile match. And how did they book, book their way out of this? Do you think Osprey wins or loses? I think this makes for a super compelling main event because you, this, unlike the Christian Cage match that the only complaint people had was believability of a title switch. This mm-hmm. the opposite. I think people could totally see them doing a, a title. There, there's a complete viable option of Osprey winning this belt or at the very least coming out of this match with a reason to do a rematch or mm-hmm. um, something that this sends this sets up Wembley for Osprey and maybe mm-hmm. they take him in a different direction and keep it on swerve like I it's it's one of those things where as we've talked about with this swerve thing like you don't want to necessarily be programming when this guy is dropping the title as soon as he wins it like he is just getting his like bearings as he's been champion for like six weeks and yeah. I think like you haven't even scratched the surface yet with the, with him. Yeah, uh, th- uh, somebody in the chat room reminds us that the Owen Hart tournament winner gets that title shot at All In. So how how does that kind of figure into the, all the plans here? You know, does this rule out Osprey versus um, uh, Swerve for All In, which was perfectly fine? I think Osprey can lose this one. You know, he's got the international championship, and it, it kind of again paved the way for Swerve to carve his own thing as the definitive top dog. Osprey will be fine, like it, it, you know, holding holding down that sort of like secondary tier on his way to building. Uh, he can he can enter world, a world title picture really any time, and that's not going to change in the next year. Um, but doing the match now. I, I could see Osprey losing it to build to a bigger rematch later on, whether or not it's at all in. Well, you also have to look at the fact that like the, the Wembley ticket sales, like they they're at about 40,000 right now. And mm. what's going to move tickets for, for Wembley? And that, okay. that's it's an so argument. Osprey in, in can favor. lose the match and then win it, win the title shot back through the tournament if that's the end goal that they want. And be in the, the Owen Hart tournament simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Because they would have to announce. Because I imagine yeah, that when does the tournament start? It's got to start soon because it's got to go Bindo. throughout June. The finals are July 10th. They're a week after, or they're ten days after the pay per view. Oh, okay, so they have to start before Forbidden Door. Yeah, which would be clumsy so to have to be building up for a title match and being in a tournament for a title. Yeah, match. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think Osprey will be in the Owen then. Yeah, it would it would suggest he would not be. Hmm. So anyway, um, I, I think it's it's. Certainly, they have a plan if they're they're going this direction. But I'm sure this was not the match you were expecting for Forbidden Door. Way and I had this decision: Are we doing enough shows together? And Way said, "We we are not, John. We are dropping the ball." So for the month of June, we are going to be staying up late on Wednesday nights. We are going to bring you Rewind to Dynamite, and then after the review, we are jumping over to the Post Wrestling Cafe for each Wednesday in the month of June to review. That week's episode of Who Killed WCW. And after four episodes, this is going to be like the extended game of Clue. We're going to figure out who killed WCW with what weapon in what room. Uh, This is the new series that Vice is putting out. It will be airing Tuesday nights on Vice. And to kick off our coverage of Who Killed WCW, I'll be joined by Evan Hustney next week. That'll be a free interview for everyone. And then our first review Wednesday night next week 